So Banjo decided to help me out in today's video. That's a good boy. Hello and welcome to C.S. Wilson Prints. I'm C.S. Wilson. In this video, I want to talk about something that I just recently learned about mirror tiles that just might help you improve your bed adhesion. So I'm going to be talking about mirror tiles, but probably not in the way that you might be thinking. Mirror tiles are a great build surface for 3D printers. They're inexpensive and easy to find. You can normally pick up a pack of five or six for around $10 to $15 at your local home improvement center. They're relatively flat and they normally weigh less than borosilicate glass. They conduct heat fairly evenly and let's face it, they're just cool to look at. Also, if you keep them super cleaned, you can print PLA and PETG directly to the bare surface without any adhesive agent at all. And by super cleaned, I mean cleaning off any remnants of a previous print with a razor scraper, then rubbing down the surface with 4 aught steel wool, then cleaning the surface up after that with isopropyl alcohol or window cleaner. And remember to never touch or blow on the surface once you've cleaned it. Unfortunately though, in my experience, ABS doesn't stick very well to bare glass. And that's basically what a mirror tile is. It's a piece of glass with a silvery kind of chromey paint on the back side and then a protective coating on top of that. And that's what I discovered. Did you know that you could print on that surface? I didn't at first, but I tested it out just to see what would happen and this is what I found. I'm not exactly sure what that coating is, but I found out in my testing that it exhibits the same characteristics that other commercially available build surfaces claim. And that is when the plate is heated up, the filament will stick to it, and then when it cools down, you can remove the print completely and with very little effort. So the main focus that I had with all of this testing was to get ABS to reliably stick to the build plate. I haven't really had any issues with PLA and PETG, so I was mainly focusing on the ABS. And by printing on the back of the mirror tile, I have had great success with all of these materials. The only issue that I really had was when I tried to use wood PLA. I don't know if it was the brand that I was using or the settings that I had, but it stuck down too well to the build plate to the point that I had a lot of trouble getting it off of there. I had to end up heating the bed up to about 75 degrees C and then using a razor scraper to try to get that off of there and it basically made a big mess. So I ended up damaging this coating and I think that little minor scrapes and scratches aren't really that big of a deal. But just be careful and know that the coating can become damaged if you're a little too aggressive with it, like I was. I should also mention that my testing may not be all that scientific. I basically tried to simulate a real world scenario by printing a variety of models uh, using different materials that I happen to have on hand. And those materials included PLA, PETG, and ABS, mainly focusing on ABS. And I don't have a huge selection of different manufacturers and materials. But what I do have, I think, is probably a pretty fair representation of what most hobbyists might have. I mean, it's all about the stash, right? Here are some numbers I came up with during my testing. And keep in mind that these numbers are for my particular setup. Yours might vary just a little bit. For most brands of PLA, I'll use 200 degrees C on the nozzle and 65 degrees C on the bed. I'll use 235 to 240 C on the nozzle and 75 C on the bed for PETG. And ABS gets a nozzle of around 230 to 240 C with a bed of 90. I might also add that an ABS bed temperature of 90 degrees C is actually 10 degrees lower than what I used to use whenever I printed on bare glass. And as I said before, I had limited success whenever I printed ABS on bare glass. It was really hit and miss. Most, mostly miss. And when I found out about that, I tried to lower the bed temperatures on the other materials and that didn't end very well. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't like that. So in a nutshell, you should be able to use the same slicer and temperature settings that you're using now, but feel free to experiment with those. As a matter of fact, feel free to experiment with all of this. Don't just take my word for it. If you happen to have a mirror tile, just flip it over and give it a try. I do recommend cleaning the back of the mirror tile before using it. I did this by scrubbing it down with 4 aught steel wool and then cleaning it several times with isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. I then re-leveled my bed and heated it up to between 90 and 100 degrees C and let it cool down completely. Once that's done, you can use it as you normally would, except without any glue or hairspray. Just use it as is. During the first few heating cycles, you're probably going to notice a pretty strong paint fume smell. It didn't bother me too much, but it's definitely noticeable. And that went away after about a day of use. I certainly hope it's not toxic. 
I haven't developed any new twitches lately, so that might be a good sign. If you're really sensitive to that sort of thing, you might want to use proper ventilation, uh, unlike me. So that was it. I just wanted to pass this along to those who might be having trouble getting their prints to stick to the build plate. I know how frustrating that can be. I can't guarantee that you'll have the same results that I had, but it might be something worth trying. As far as the longevity of the surface on the back of the plate, that's yet to be seen. I've been printing on it pretty much non-stop for the past week, and other than the area that I screwed up, everything seems to indicate that it might last for quite a while. And honestly, when it gives out, I have five more replacements, so I'm not too concerned about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope it works out for you. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. What do you say, Banjo? Is that a wrap? Good boy.